Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Hello everyone, welcome to chapter 6 Chemical Equilibrium. In this chapter 6, we have three subtopics that we are going to learn together. The first subtopic is 6.1 Dynamic Equilibrium, subtopic 6.2 Equilibrium Constant, and subtopic 6.3 Le Chatelier's Principle. Let's start with the first subtopic, dynamic equilibrium. Here are the learning outcomes. At the end of the lesson, students should be able to A. Explain what is a reversible reaction. Number two, Roman. Explain what is dynamic equilibrium. And three, what is law of mass action. Learning outcome B. State the characteristic of a system in equilibrium. And C, you should be able to interpret the curve of concentration, reactant and product against time for a reversible reaction. Few chemical reactions proceed in one direction only. For example, here we have reactant A and B react together to produce product C and D. And this single arrow show that the reaction is irreversible. For example, here we have methane gas CH4 react with chlorine gas to produce CH3Cl and HCl gas under sunlight and the arrow shows that the reaction is irreversible reaction. But most chemical reactions are reversible, at least to some extent. Let's take a closer look of what is reversible reaction. A forward reaction is a reaction that proceeds from left to right. Here we have a forward reaction from reacting to product. A backward reaction is a reaction that proceeds from right to left. So this is a reverse reaction from product to reactant. A reversible reaction is a reaction that take place in both forward and reverse direction. And class, you have to notice that when we are talking about reversible reaction, when you are writing a reversible reaction, this double-headed arrow indicates a reversible reaction. For example, here we have SO2 gas react with oxygen gas in a reversible reaction, produce SO3 gas. Now, in the beginning of the reaction, we only have a reactant species. So, when the reactant species react together to produce a product, as soon as some product molecules are formed, the reverse reaction will begin to take place and the reactant will form from the product. After a certain time, the net concentration of SO2, O2 and SO3 do not change. However, SO2 and oxygen gas will still combine to form SO3. At the same time, the SO3 decompose back to form SO2 and oxygen. So at the time where there is no net change in the concentrations of reactant and product, we can say that now sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide exist in equilibrium. So let's take a look at what is a dynamic equilibrium. As I've shown you before, in a reversible reaction, both forward and reverse reaction will continue indefinitely even though equilibrium has been established. Therefore, the chemical equilibrium is a dynamic process. So here are the two important characteristics that you have to know about dynamic equilibrium. The first one is, a reaction is said to achieve equilibrium when the reactant and the product concentrations are constant. It means it has stopped changing in terms of concentrations. 
the second criteria is this the reaction is said to achieve equilibrium when the forward and reverse reaction rate have become equal to further understand let's take a closer look at the graph so this graph show how the concentration of reactant and product change against time so here we have a as a product sorry as a reactant and b as a product so at the initial time t0 so we only have reactant in our system so the concentration of reactant species a will decrease over time and the product will start to form and the concentration of B product will increase over time. So after a certain period of time, the concentration of A and B remain unchanged okay, and has become constant, but the reaction did not stop. Okay, so at this time, where the concentrations of reactant and product remain unchanged and has become constant, so at this time we can say that the reaction has achieved dynamic equilibrium so this curve now shows you how the rate of reaction change against time so the dotted line here represent the rate of forward reaction and this red line represent the rate of reverse reaction Okay, so the rate of forward reaction will decrease okay, when the concentration of reactant A decreases over time. Meanwhile, the rate of reverse reaction increases as the concentration of product B increases over time. But you can see after a period of time, both forward and reverse reaction are proceeding at the same rate. Okay, as the concentration of reactant and product remain unchanged. So at the time where the rate of forward and reverse reaction becomes equal, we can say that the system is now at the state of equilibrium. Let's use this another anal analogy to further understand about dynamic equilibrium. For example, here we have an escalator that moving downward. For example, here, this represents a forward reaction and there is U moving upward against the escalator and U representing reverse reaction. Now, for you to stay on the escalator, you have to move, you have to climb the escalator at the same rate as the escalator going down. So, when you when you are moving at the same rate as the escalator you and the escalator now is said to be at dynamic equilibrium so when you and the escalator move at the same rate in different direction you are now in dynamic equilibrium and your position is not changing your position is stay at the same position but your feet is still moving Showing that the reaction is has not stopped, but the position, but your position, which representing the concentration, remain constant. Now we have a real reaction between N2O4, which decomposed to form NO2 gas. So this is the forward reaction. And this is a reverse reaction. Okay, so this is the graph that shows how the concentration of reactant against time. Okay, this is the 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 uh sorry. This the 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 brown line represents the concentration of product which increase over time. So at the time where the concentration of N2O4 and NO2 become constant and does not change, so it is now said 
that the reaction has achieved equilibrium. So this is the graph of rate against time. So when the rate of forward reaction equal the rate of reverse reaction, so at this time, we can say that the reaction has achieved dynamic equilibrium. So this slide is very important for you. So we have four characteristics of system in equilibrium. The first one that is the reaction must occur in a closed system. Number two, the reaction that has achieved dynamic equilibrium is when the rate of forward reaction must equal to the rate of reverse reaction. Characteristic number three is the properties such as concentration, pressure and color of reactant and also the product are constant and remain unchanged. And the last criteria is the final equilibrium position is the same regardless of whether the equilibrium is approached from forward or reverse direction. Now we have law of mass action. Law of mass action also known as equilibrium law. It is a relationship that relates the concentration of product of reactant and products at equilibrium. So for a reversible for a reversible reaction at equilibrium and at constant temperature, a certain ratio of reactant and product concentration has a constant value which is K that is known as equilibrium constant. Consider this general reaction equation. For example, we have two reactant species which is A and B reacts together to produce C and D. So this is a reversible reaction with, the, with this double-headed arrow. So when the reaction has achieved equilibrium, the K is equals to the concentration of product species rise to the power of its mole coefficient over the concentration of product of reactant species rise to the power of its mole coefficient. So where A, B, C and D is the stoichiometric coefficient for the reactant species A, B, C and D, K is equilibrium constant and this bracket shows the concentration value of each species in the reaction. So in a conclusion, the reversible reaction is the reaction uh, where it achieves dynamic equilibrium. So the rate of forward reaction will be equal to the rate of reverse reaction. The law of mass action is related to the equilibrium constant K. And we have four characteristics of system in equilibrium, which it must occur in closed system. Number two, the rate of forward reaction must equal to the rate of reverse reaction. The concentration of uh, reactant and product and also the pressure must become constant and the equilibrium position become unchanged.